So you've heard of capital allowances and you know that you can just use the repair, replace, renew concept of expensing your refurbishment against your taxable income. But which one is better, capital allowances or the three R's? Well, that's a great question and it's something that Louise and I debated with Jake Ills in this video. So go check it out. So the next question is, is from Guy. Uh, Guy has asked the question, what's the difference between capital allowances and expenses? Okay, that's, good one. that's one with you, Jake. <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, thanks for asking the most difficult question that's been argued about in the tax courts for 100 years. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, interesting. So, I guess two things, I suppose. Your revenue expenditure is for short term expenses. How you run your operation, how you run your pub, how you do that day to day, your ordinary repair and maintenance. You've got a rip in a chair, you replace the chair, you refurbish that sort of thing, any painting and any small items. So that's revenue. Uh, and the capital item, capital items for the long and lasting and enduring benefits of your trade, sort of a one off expenditure. Uh, things that uh, you need to acquire, proper upgrade, refurbs, full fit outs, and those sort of things. Something that might not be changed for a whole generation. So classically, these are the sort of things we see when people extend or refurbish entirely. Then the capital elements versus the revenue element is pretty much, um, it's very generally better. It's gonna be hard to say to the revenue that your entire fit out of one million pounds for your pub is actually a revenue expense, when in fact, it's clearly gonna be a long and enduring benefit of your trade, so it's a capital. There are, there are some things you can, there are some fine lines which can be claimed as expenses, so if you did want to replace a toilet, you could do as an expense. But if you want to replace all of the toilets on two floors, complete with the plumbing, arguably that would be a capital capital consideration. So, I think the answer was so good that one of my clients has just fainted. <laughs> um, so, you heard a bang behind us. So you heard a bang. That was my client. Um, I don't, by the way, I don't purposely pr imprison my clients. Uh, <laughs> so just, just in case you was wondering. Um, so just a quick one on this point, actually, because there is a, a capital allowances and expenses. Mm. Let's go through some items. So uh, you mentioned toilet. That yeah. can be claimed under capital allowances. Yeah. Um, what What about a integrated kitchen? Yeah, integrated kitchen. Yeah, certainly. Um, interesting points. There are some there are some tricky points. So uh, we had this conversation recently, I think, with a Finnish holiday like client who we read the SDLT Act and the Capital Allowances Act, uh, and there are some contradictions between the two. And chattels. Yeah, and chattels. So loose items still claim for capital allowances, but but they're not fixed. So they're not fixtures. And, and Simon, I'm deliberately, and for everybody else who probably knows out there, I'm deliberately avoiding the technicalities for the for the benefit of everybody. We else. don't need to go there. We don't <laughs> need to go there. I, I, I'm so, trying to make this light, Jake. Don't don't. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've actually got okay, some, let, I've got let's some, get through some different items. Let's get through some different. How yeah, about so, so if you had a fully integrated kitchen and everything was fixed, so okay. uh, worktop, uh, top the cabinets, top and bottom, cooker hood, cooker, integrated dishwasher, fridge freezer. Those, those those elements, some considerations for flooring potentially, some considerations for splashbacks depending on the, the, the setting, not just for an FHL, but certainly the pub. So for example, a, a fitted kitchen in a pub or a restaurant kitchen would be significantly, the cooker hood in there would be interestingly huge uh, compared to the cooker hood in your furnished hollow dinner, for example. So yes. as long as the item is fixed, then, 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 then yes, is the short answer. Mm -hmm. What about a SETI? A SETI is a loose item, it's a chattel, so yes, you can claim capital allowances, but you just do it in a different different way, really. So yeah. as a, it's more of a fixture and a fitting, a furnishing, a loose item. Okay. Uh, how about a, um, a lamp, lamp, I was about to say lantern, <laughs> maybe in 1800s, uh, <laughs> a lamp on a table lamp? A table lamp, same, same as a sofa, treated exactly the same way as a loose item. Loose. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you had a pub or a restaurant with rooms or a hotel or a care home, then the divide between loose items and fixed items would be um, important to distinguish. Okay. And I think just because we had a question about what are expenses, and I think this is quite a good to differentiate because what Jake is, is explaining to you 
is that you can claim these on capital outs. The question was, well, what's the difference between expenses? So in HMRC manual, you can have an expense against your property, which is a replacement repair renewal. And there can be times when by you could say, well, actually, it's either an ex And I know that Jake and I have done this before, whereby clients have claimed things through expenses using the repair, replace, renew, which is a HMRC thing. Um, and they, because of that, you can put it against your accounts, but you can't claim it twice. You can't double dip, as they say. So you have to think about, well, how do you extract this? So if you are going to go for capital assets, you've got service accommodation mm -hmm. or you've got some commercial building, don't go through the repair, replace, renew concepts because you just won't be able to claim as much. You could have claimed it in capital ounces anyway. So you're almost what wasting your time. You may as well kind of capitalize the costs out. Get someone like Jake. Um, again, don't forget, there's a link below this video. Make sure you click on that link to be able to put forward your capital ounces claims. But that's the better way around it rather than go through repair and replace. If you've got a buy, standard buy to let, you know, Jake, myself and Louise have not spoken about capital assets buy to lets or HMOs. I just think we can ignore HMOs for tonight because I don't think that capital assets really is, is that all that great for, for HMOs unless you've got a really super duper HMO, which is like 100 rooms. But I think you can then go for the repair, replace, renew because if you can say... Do you know what? I've replaced a carpet, or you've replaced something that was there, so therefore that will be allowed. Years ago, you couldn't claim it, but now you can. Um, if I'm going to repair a broken tile on the roof, that can be claimed. And what's the other one? Replace, repair, renew. renew. Yeah, if you're painting and decorating, that's the renewal. So you'd be able to claim that. So standard buy to let. So maybe that's an easy way of thinking about it. If you've got a standard buy to let HMO, go through the expenses route. If you've got service covered, be careful here, Jake, <laughs> holiday let versus uh, commercial building, then always do capital allowances claims instead because you can get a lot more claim, a bank for your book. Would you agree with that, Jake? Yeah, I think it's a nice way of summing it up entirely. Uh, another thing is we talked about an integrated fridge as part of the kitchen for an FHL. Whereas you just replace a fridge, you just plug into the wall, then you know it's just a just a replacement item, isn't it? So mm. that's yeah. a simple way of doing it.